Hi guys, how's everyone doing? Um, I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy uh, during this quarantine period. Um, again, thanks for being patient with this whole uh, you know YouTube video thing and the discussion boards and everything. Um, you know we're all doing the best we can. So um, if you guys have any questions or any issues, you know feel free to reach out to me, you know through email. So. Today's lecture will be like part two on the president and, um, you know, just talk about presidential power. And then the last two or three minutes, we'll talk about the Electoral College and the popular vote real quick. So, um, yeah, it's been a tendency uh, since FDR uh, for every president since him to drastically expand their power way beyond the Constitution. Um, now, do you guys remember uh, what the president is actually allowed to do in the Constitution? Um, you know, just reflect for a second. Do you guys remember it all? Um, so the powers that the president has, at least constitutionally, is he can uh, pardon criminals, right? Um, or those facing charges, the accused. Um he can veto laws, right? But of course, both houses of Congress can override that. The president becomes commander in chief of the military. Once Congress, right, key, key phrase, once Congress declares war, then he's allowed to become commander in chief. And the president's allowed to appoint Supreme Court justices and his cabinet officials, you know, like Secretary of State, Secretary of Treasury, um, his Defense Secretary, National Security Advisor, all that he can appoint. And then it's up to the Senate to confirm, right? Same thing with the Supreme Court. So um, that's not a lot. That's, you know, that's a, that was a lot of power for the time, you know, and even the uh, group of more libertarian thinkers in the 1700s when the Constitution was written had an issue with those power given to the president. But now, you know, today, as we'll see, the president has expanded way beyond any constitutional powers allowed and should be pretty clear. So uh, FDR, um, you know, let's talk about just some, we'll, we'll go through every president, but just look at some highlights. Um, you know, what did FDR do? Do you guys remember what FDR did that was considered, uh, you know, unconstitutional? Well, he did these things called executive orders, right? So um, presidents had used them periodically, time to time, up until FDR. But FDR really um, started using these regularly. And basically, an executive order is, is like not much different from a kingly decree. The president, during his term, just issues a law. It goes into, into place, theoretically, for as long as he is in power for. Um, and the next president, theoretically, also has the power to overturn executive orders from the last administration. So FDR, you know, the executive orders were kind of problematic, right? Because, well, two things. He was in power for 13 years. So it's not like there was an, another administration waiting to overturn what he did. Um, the second issue, uh, you know, with with this um, is that he had a Democratic Congress, so there was really no check on him. Both houses of Congress during much of the Great Depression were controlled by Democrats, and then he was in power, so there was no one to check him. He could do essentially whatever he wanted, right? Um, so executive orders, what did he do then? Well, he interned Japanese Americans with that, right? Um, that was one of the more controversial cases that was during World War II. Um, he interned Japanese Americans and many never even got their land back, right, after World War II. Uh, actually, an official uh, U.S. government apology didn't even come to the 90s, right, for that. So, you know, FDR used executive orders in some rather abusive ways with Japanese Americans. He also tried to attempt to use executive orders to pack the Supreme Court. So basically, he could have all uh, of his lackeys or favorable judges in there, right? Um, he used executive orders to override state banking laws. He used executive orders to override, uh, temporarily speaking, 
um, state governor's power to use the National Guard. Uh, he had a lot of different executive orders, well, the equivalent of the National Guard back then. He had, you know, he basically overrid a lot of state, local, uh, and even congressional statutes to executive order. Um, then we move uh, to someone like, um, you know, you can look at uh, uh, JFK and Lyndon Johnson, right? Uh, they both famously used uh, presidential power to order uh, spying on um, what they perceived as domestic enemies during the 60s. Uh, they started basically wiretapping people like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, all of the Black Panthers, uh, many of the uh, hippie communes, famous ones at the times, were, were bugged. Um, and those were all under presidential order, right? First under JFK and then Lyndon Johnson. And then, of course, you get to someone like, um, you know, Richard Nixon, right? Who created an entire war of drugs, war on drugs, which many argue was unconstitutional from the start. There was no authority granted the president to even do that. Of course, Vietnam um, against the wishes of Congress. Um, actually, I got to implicate uh, Lyndon Johnson, and Nixon both went around Congress, uh, both had said that you're not allowed, we're not funding this war, we're not supporting it, and they started the wars anyways, right? Uh, you know, you get into the, you get into the 80, of, 80s, of course, uh, oh, I mean, of course, there's Watergate, which we could spend an entire lecture on, right, in terms of abuse of executive power. Then we get to the 80s, you know, we have Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan, of course, abused executive power, too. The two big events that immediately come to mind real quick here was the Iran-Contra scandal. Uh, that's basically when uh, Ronald Reagan ordered uh, the CIA to start basically um, sending secret weapons without the American public or Congress knowing to uh, a rebel group in Nicaragua called the Contras. And the Contras were basically trying to overthrow with U.S. support, a socialist government that we didn't want in power. So illegally, we were funding a rebel group to get rid of the government we didn't want in power. Um, well, it turned out that this rebel group was also some of the biggest cocaine dealers and distributors and growers in the entire world, right? So the U.S. government knew that they were doing business with basically um, uh, drug dealers, drug dealers and, and drug kingpins and drug lords, and we had a, a relationship with them. Well, anyways, all of that came to the public's knowledge uh, later on, and and uh, some even question how did Reagan even avoid impeachment? You know, for this, um, you know, then you get to someone like uh, you know uh, Bill Clinton. You know, Bill Clinton just started a couple wars by himself without congressional approval. Uh, you know, he, he did that in uh, Kosovo uh, that had no congressional support. Uh, he dispatched U.S. troops to go serve in the United Nations in the botched, Somal famous uh, Black Hawk Down, Somalia. Uh, there's a whole movie about it. 18 soldiers lost their lives. You know, their bodies were hung on bridges. It was a horrific event. Um, and you know, Clinton got a lot of uh, heat for abusing what was perceived as presidential power. Then you get to George W. Bush from 2000 to 2008. Dear God, right? George W. Bush presided in power post 9-11. Uh, so he helped, was one of the architects of the Patriot Act, which was basically a massive domestic spying program. Uh, he, also, he also authorized the creation of Guantanamo Bay, which was illegal, right, which was a detainment facility off the coast of Cuba. Uh, you know, he, he went around Congress at first with the Iraq War, uh, Congress only reluctantly supported later on, and on and on and on and on. There were many abuses during the Bush administration. Uh, then you get to Obama. Of course, there was the Fast and Furious scandal where the Obama administration ordered weapons to be shipped uh, basically to the biggest drug cartel in Mexico, who we were in business with, the Sinaloas. Um, and he got kind of caught red-handed there. Then Obama also signed into law uh, a bill that allows him to declare any American citizen an enemy combatant and to detain any citizen he perceives as supporting terrorism. Um, 
you know, so there were, point is there's, the abuse of presidential power goes on and on and on and on. And maybe we'll do one more lecture after this and we'll focus on the Trump years. That could be maybe its own lecture about the abuse of presidential power. So um, basically every president has gotten stronger and stronger since the last, right? Um, and has many people wondering if we've, you know, we're, we're evolving into something of a tyranny, right? So you guys be well, take care. Uh, much peace to everyone.